There are a few little verses in Proverbs 30 I'd like to bring to your recall. I know you know these verses, but beginning in verse 24 and down to 28 of Proverbs 30, we read about four things that are little in the earth, but they're exceedingly wise. And it talks about the ants and the conies or the rock badgers and the locusts and then the spider. And it says about the spider, the spider skillfully grasps with its hands and it is in king's palaces. So the idea is it's a little creature, easily killed, hangs by a thread, its little web, and yet somehow makes its way into the highest courts, into the places of great influence in the world. And so there's an application here, obviously, and we all know stories about people who were custodians or cleaning ladies or, or uh, nannies who were able to influence people of tremendous power through their faithful witness. And so um, I've been looking for some good stories, and my son David went through this book, the story of Dr. Bedeker, and gave me some suggestions here, and there are many. Bedeker's one of my heroes. You can see here up on my study wall, there's a painting of Frederick Bedeker, the man that God used in a wonderful way in opening Russia to the gospel underneath another Fred, uh, Fred Stanley Arnett, who God used in opening up large swaths of Africa to the gospel. Well, as I was reading through this, the first story that David highlighted was a story about Colonel Pashkov, Vasily Andropovich Pashkov. Colonel Pashkov was one of the early converts in St. Petersburg, Russia. But uh, when I read his story, of course, he, Pashkov, was led to Christ through the ministry of Lord Radstock. And uh, Lord Radstock, otherwise known as Granville Waldegrave, was a tremendous influence for God in the upper classes both in Great Britain and in Russia and in other parts of Europe during those days. He actually was the man that led Dr. Bedeker to Christ. And so as I looked further back into the story, I came across another link in the chain, and this was Elizaveta Cherkova. She was a member of the upper classes. Her grandfather was one of the heroes of the War of 1812. Her husband was highly placed, very wealthy. They had a beautiful palace in St. Petersburg. And um, she grew weary of the Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox rituals. She felt that they actually got in the way of her relationship to God. She brought a tutor into the home to work with her son, her young son, Misha. And uh, this man was a believer, and he pointed Misha to the Lord. Well, not long after, uh, Misha contracted a deadly disease, and um, I think it was what they used to call consumption. And they took him to the south of France with the hope that he might recover. And while he was on his deathbed, he would speak to his mother and say, Mother, do you love the Lord Jesus? And I hope to see you in heaven. And maybe the reason God is taking me home is that he knows in my older life, I might fall away from the Lord. I might not be faithful to him. And he wants to take me home now. He would ask all of these rather startling questions for a little boy. I think he may have been seven or eight years old. In any case, uh, he passed away. And she found no comfort in the Orthodox Church. She turned to the Catholic Church. She went to the Lutheran Church. And then she was invited to a Bible study in a home in Paris where Lord Radstock was preaching. And for the first time, she heard the gospel clearly explained. And she responded to the gospel, and she was gloriously saved. She returned to St. Petersburg, and she invited... Lord Radscock, to come to her home and there to proclaim the gospel. 
And there were a whole story. I'm mean, quite frustrated, actually, because as I did more research, I kept coming up with all these people. Count Brabinski, who was uh, the Minister of Railways, who was gloriously saved. A fascinating story. His wife invited Radstock to their home in St. Petersburg, and Radstock began to explain the gospel from the Book of Romans. And um, Brabinski was frustrated by this, and he said, excuse me, I'm a busy man, I've got to get to work. He went to his office, and his purpose was to methodically go through the Book of Romans and prove Radstock wrong. And as he went through it, he realized, oh, this is the gospel. And he fell on his knees in his office, and he put his trust in Christ. And then there were others, Julia Zast Z Zazetskaya, Zazetskaya, uh, who um, carried on a long-term discussion with the great author Dostoevsky about the gospel. And it was interesting, as I was looking through this article, I came across a little list of the five basic principles that these people were renowned for. Now, this woman that I've been talking about, uh, Elizabeth Chertkova, she opened up uh, a hostel in, in St. Petersburg, a school for teaching poor girls how to do sewing, eventually opened a, a hospital, a clinic, and so on. Uh, she went into the prisons, into the prison hospitals. Many people were saved. And of course, at that time, there was huge hostility between the upper classes and the lower classes. There was virtually no middle class. And here were these people going in and loving these poor people and helping them and, and, and sharing Christ with them. And the animosity uh, was overcome. And, and many of these people became dear saints just a glorious work of God at that time. Well, as I was going through this article, and I think it was written by someone probably where Russian is their first language because some of the English is a bit awkward, but they, they said that in essence, these believers, their credo came down to five things. Number one, a person who remembers their sinfulness is unable to cope with it on their own. Okay, so the deep conviction of sin, simply bringing sins before people, they come to realize, I can't fix me. Number two, despair should make them turn to Christ, who doesn't reject anyone and accepts every sinner who repents and believes in him. Number three, Christ shed his blood for the sins of the whole world, including my sins. Number four, with faith in the mission of Christ, I am justified and saved. And then number five, good deeds are the fruit of true faith. Through them, faith is manifested. Also at that time, Princess Natalia Levin was saved, and she was a very dear friend of Alexander's mother, and um, when the Orthodox Church rose up in terrible persecution against the Christians, Colonel Pashkov and all of these other well-known people had to leave. They were banished from Russia. But she stayed on, and uh, she kept her palace open for Bible studies and prayer. And they tried to shut her down. In fact, on one occasion, Alexander III was trying to clear out all the evangelicals, but his mother said, listen, you can't treat, these are widows, and you can't treat them like that. And so all through those years, Though she seemed to be defenseless and weak, this widow living alone in St. Petersburg, God used that connection with the mother of, of Alexander III to maintain the gospel testimony there in St. Petersburg. So wonderful stories, but you just look back and you say, all right, 
Here's Lord Radstock, a man of influence. In fact, uh, he was caricatured in Vanity Fair. I was looking up some details there, and here was a painting of him listed as an evangelist and a philanthropist on the pages of Vanity Fair. He was spoken about by Leo Tolstoy, and the gospel came to Tolstoy largely through these people in St. Petersburg who shared the gospel with him. So, so when we read these stories and we think, wow, look at this great man, Radstock, he's a member of the British upper classes and was able to move in those circles. But then as we back up, we realize actually there was a little boy who died and was willing to die for Christ. And through that led his mother to the Lord. And she was the one who invited Radstock to St. Petersburg. It was in her home that Colonel Pashkov and Babinski and others were saved. And then through that reaching into the intelligentsia, the, the academic world, these, these writers and so on. Just a tremendous work of God. So here's the little spider, seemingly unnoticed, working off in the corner. Nobody notices. But through that little spider, there is an influence in king's palaces. And such it was the case here. This little boy who put his trust in the Lord, some unnamed tutor who led him to Christ. And then he was influential in stirring his mother's heart, looking for comfort, going to all the big churches, couldn't find it there, and then found it in a drawing room listening to Lord Radstock, and then how she brought him to St. Petersburg, and so this chain of events that led to this tremendous work of God. And these men, like Colonel Pashkov, they were influential in encouraging the Stundis. The Stundis were lower-class Russians who had been saved, listening to these Bible readings in the homes of their masters. They were servants on the farms of people who had Bible readings, and they would stand in the doorway and listen, and they started to get saved. And so this whole movement among the lower classes, and Colonel Pashkov would arrange conferences for them, pay for their, their train rides, pay for their meals and their hotels so they could come and study the Word of God together. So this is powerful stuff. And I just encourage you to realize that all over the world today, God has spiders in king's palaces. He has people unnoticed, seemingly weak, but God is using them in mighty ways to accomplish his purposes. May the Lord encourage us, like the little girl in the house of Naaman, how influential her life was as she reached out. And maybe some of you are custodians, or maybe you're cleaning ladies, or you're doing things in the homes of influential people. Remember that your godly testimony may be used by the Lord to vastly spread the word of God and we just pray that God will continue to allow spiders in king's palaces.